Hi again, Soapsters. So in this video, we're going to look at uh, something a little bit different. Um, and I'm not sure whether this has been done in soap before, but if it hasn't, here we go with the first. So we're going to start off with our oils. Now, the base of this soap is basically poured into a slab mold. And this particular slab mold is a lovely one I love. I got it from Amazon. Um, you get eight bars of soap out of it if you're doing kind of a flat um, pour. And it's it's just it's just a really nice mold, and I do I do like it doing these kind of uh, little testing batches. So I'm adding my lye into my oils, and I've also put a little bit of titanium dioxide and um, a touch of the main colour, just to turn that um, kind of white batter into a very very subtle pink. Um, what you do need to be quite careful of here is, and a little bit later on you'll see. Um, stopping your batter looking like meat <laughs> when you're making soap is a challenge and a skill. So when you're going with pinks, just try and make sure you are not trying to overlay too many pinks on top of one another, otherwise it looks a little like bacon. I'm going to get this batter to trace, um, which it is now, so you can see there, which has got a nice trace on it, there's no separation or anything like that. Um, and the fragrance I'm using in this one is just peppermint. So it's peppermint essential oil used at a rate of about 1.2%. I think 2% is the maximum use um, for peppermint. It may even be 1.5, don't quote me on that one, but I know that using it at 1.2, it's quite safe. So we're just going to make sure this is coming up to trace. Um, everything is in there, so uh, um, and peppermint will retard uh, trace. So you, you've got a little bit long to work on this one. So you can see here, I'm going to pour off some of my main batch, and this is then going to be coloured in a really kind of deeper pink. Um, and I've gone with a magenta rather than a kind of light pink um, to get a good contrast and avoid that kind of meaty looking um, deal. We'll get this stirred in, and you can see that this stirs in really nicely and we get this kind of much deeper pink colour. Um, I could have gone even deeper with it um, looking on in hindsight but for this pour this was perfect for me at the time. There we go and we'll just put a little bit more pink in so we're going to scrape the rest of our pink in. It's just um, it's two micas um, it is a kind of neon pink um, in fact it's three micas neon pink a red um, which is from Resonate uh, the neon pink is from Mike and Mama, and I've also added just a touch of blue. It deepens the pink colour, it deepens the magenta colour, um, and it also turns it more onto the kind of red, red side than the uh, kind of yellow side. So you just want to bear that in mind when you're making it, that you want to put a little bit of blue in there to get a, a deeper colour without kind of heading towards the blacks or the activated charcoals. This pour is very, very simple. Um, and all we're going to do is pour all of the base into the mould um, and get everything scraped out. And then on each bar, and you'll see on my mould there that it's marked out, we're just going to pour a dollop of this pink into each of the cavities for each bar. And then we're just going to do a very simple drag swirl through each one of them. So the batter has thickened up a little bit, um, but for this sort of pour, I'm not really worried about it. And the more texture I get on top, um, the better this technique works. So that's our base in. And you can see where we've marked all of the bars for each of the individual cavities. I've marked both the mould on the outside and the internal liner, just so I've got a better idea when I take the bar out if I need to do anything before I've, um, I've demolded it from the liner and know exactly where things are. Now this thickened up on me and um, I'd have liked it to have been a bit thinner, but 
for the purposes of this particular mold and this particular design, it didn't really make very much difference. I just wanted to get a significant portion of each soap in this magenta colour. So we're just pouring it in. I'm not really bothered you can pour them up high, you can pour down low. I don't really mind. Um, it's just about getting a difference in colour on the surface of the soap and a little bit of texture in there as well. So plenty left over and we're just going to go back through and create this kind of texture bit on the top. So again, thickening up a wee bit, but that's fine. Not so worried about that one. Um, to get it to go right the way through, you want it a little bit thinner, but this is really not a problem. And there we go, bang it down. And that little bit of uh, batter that's left in there, we're gonna pop into a separate mold and we're gonna make a little bit of um, soap dough with it. So here you can see I'm just using a popsicle stick and I like to use popsicle sticks on the long side to essentially pull the soap around when it's a little bit thicker. Um, so you won't get nice fine lines, but you will certainly get some good, heavy swirling. Once through each one's fine, you can go twice. Again, this is really up to your own design aesthetics and the way you want it to look. I just wanted to go through once. Now look how nicely that's setting up. Um, so it could have been it could have been a lot thinner when I did this, but this was an experiment. It was a bit of a play. It was a bit of something that I wanted to kind of try. I'd got a, a an idea in my head and I wanted to give it a go. That's where we're going to leave it. Now you may be going, oh my god. Um, so final bit for this. This is gold mica mixed in with some light carrier oil. I've used olive oil in this one, but you could use um, almond, uh, sweet almond, you could use um, various other oils to carry this gold. And I'm using a toothbrush initially. I wasn't happy with the way this was kind of coming off. I wasn't getting enough drippage and stuff like that. So I wanted big lumps of gold. I wanted to get a lot of kind of this kind of swirling in there. Um, so I was basically kind of dripping things and dragging things and flicking and it was pretty much what I wanted um, at the end of it but it's one of those things that I think next time I would look at using a firmer art brush um, and actually kind of that allows you to flick the bristles to get these kind of um, abstract Jackson Pollock-esque style on the top. Bearing in mind I'm actually going to play quite a lot of this away and I want it as an accent and not the main design of the soap. The main design comes a little bit later on. So I'm moving on now to work on the on-beds. Now, I don't technically know they're called embeds, um, but for me, embedding something goes in, and as these are not going in the soap, they're going on the soap, I refer to them as on-beds. These particular embeds are going to be feathers, and I've adapted this technique from techniques used by chefs to make chocolate feathers. So it's the same technique used to make chocolate feathers, only this time we're using it to make feathers. So in order to get feathers like this, what you want to do is get your soap batter to the consistency of melted chocolate, um, actually slightly thicker than melted chocolate. What you want the um, batter to be able to do is hold its form, hold its shape, but also um, create ridges, but be soft and pliable enough that you can get it relatively thin. Then what you do is you need to get the right shaped knife. So you can see here that I'm using what looks like a mini chef's knife. This is a, this is a little kind of um, chef's knife, essentially. And you're using that shape in order to create the feather. You then want to then place that knife side with the batter on it onto a piece of baking parchment or freezer paper. Lower the knife down so it is maybe one or two millimeters away from the surface and then lift straight up and pull towards you, which you create the tail at the bottom. Now, I haven't done these in forever. You can see I'm just laying it there over a rounded shape. I'm gonna stick it down. Uh, fundamentally, the oil in this is going to kind of hit the paper. Um, and that's fine, um, but essentially what you want to do is stick the paper down to keep the curve and keep the feathers curved. The other way of doing this, is, which is slightly easier, is to take a piece of large PVC pipe, 
cut in half, so you get basically a U-shape or a piece of guttering is even better, and just lay these into the guttering so they produce the curve in the opposite direction so they, they stick up. But necessity being the mother of all invention, you can see here that I've actually used a piece of cardboard and I've kind of squeezed it in the direction that all of the, um, the, the, the ribbing goes inside it. And I'm then going to use that to um, lay them over. And again, you could do the same thing, a couple of elastic bands around it just to hold it, and then you could lay them inside. Um, it's, it's entirely up to you the way you want to do it. I've moved my board down a little bit towards the edge of the table now um, because my, my hand was getting in the way. So my hand is now dropping off of the edge of the table and it's allowing you to get these slightly better feather shapes. And you just continue doing that until you've made as many uh, feathers as you need. I would always recommend making double the amount of feathers that you need because inevitably, because they are quite thin, you may snap, break uh, all of those things to them. So what we're gonna do is we're just gonna get these all made up now. And then finally, um, we will get them all into the oven and we'll see pop everything overnight. And so I've cut the bar in half here. And what we're trying to do now is just make sure that we um, cut these into the relevant bars and just make sure they are nice and neat and tidy and uh, as square as we can get them. Uh, my wire cutter was not working on this one at this time. So um, I've gone with a knife um, and I'm just cleaning up any of the extraneous uh, mica in oil that is left on the table, just so I'm not getting it everywhere. So you can see now these are kind of leveled out. The pink of the base is very light and I knew it was going to be because I didn't want to get that hammy looking uh, nightmare that you can get with uh, these kind of soaps. And then once I got them chopped down into these kind of quarters, I then went in with my wire cutter uh, to get the final cut. So after cutting the bars, what I'm doing here is going through and planing every side. I'm starting here with the top side, and I am taking off uh, a lot of the gold, a lot of the pink, and a bevel all the edges, uh, just to make sure that all of these bars are absolutely clean on all sides. And that makes the kind of next couple of steps a little bit easier. And so the next stage in this kind of multi-stage bar is just finishing off the feathers. So they've saponified overnight. 
and you can see how easily they've they've come off the uh, the paper there. And all I'm going to do is take out a little notch in the top of each one, and then one or two notches at the bottom, or vice versa. And what that does is it just makes it look a little bit more like a feather. We're not trying to go for realistic feather. We're going for a rough interpretation of what a feather outline is. Um, so where the edges might be a little bit rough, we're going to smooth them out. We're just going to give them that overall kind of featheriness aspect to them. We're not going for photorealistic. So have a look and see exactly how I'm treating each of the uh, uh, feathers here. Uh, I am using a scalpel blade. It's much sharper, much finer, and it just allows me to get a little bit more control over the look of all of these on beds. Um, we'll pop some music on and you can have a look to see how it all comes together.
and there are eight completed feathers ready to go. So the best thing with this is if you've got anything that's left over, just save them because you never know when you might break one or so on and so forth. Next stage in this is um, basically then we're going to decorate the tops of these soaps. So I've just laid them out here in a couple of lines to get them in a nice neat area. And I'm actually going to use some edible rose gold leaf on the fronts of these. Now that sounds very expensive, very luxurious. Actually, this entire packet that I bought is around about five pounds. Now, the great thing with edible gold is it's natural. If it washes down a drain, um, it'll essentially break up into fine, fine pieces and will go back into nature where it came from. So I don't have an issue with this being on a soap. It's gonna wash off. It's not gonna be there throughout the whole thing, but quite often people buy soaps because of the look. So if you're doing something like this, you can charge a little bit of a premium for it, and the likelihood is people aren't going to wash with it. If they choose to, I feel that gold leaf is a wonderful thing. Now, normally with uh, gold leaf, you use something called size. Well, we don't want to be starting putting chemicals and glue onto the front of a soap. However, wet soap, humectant, um, you're basically going to create glue on the surface of the soap. So what I'm doing is taking a small paintbrush and painting on random areas of wet onto the soap. Uh, the idea behind it is the gold leaf will actually stick itself onto those slightly wettened areas um, and then you can use a nice big brush a little bit later on to brush off the excess and you'll get this wonderful effect happen. So the first thing is you wet down the soap um, on all of them then you have to leave it. You have to leave it for a little while in order for that just to kind of dry up a little bit and become tacky rather than wet. So whilst we're doing that I want to be able to stick my feathers onto the front of the soap um, once, uh, once we've got all the gold leaf on there. So this is a little trick I picked up when I used to make wedding cakes and birthday cakes. If you don't have any royal icing and you've got to make up a huge batch of royal icing to get a little bit out, what you can do is take some uh, fondant icing, some sugar paste, wet it down with a little bit of water and create a glue. So, because soap is an humectant, it absorbs water uh, and it goes kind of sticky and sloppy. By adding a little bit of water to my uh, planing uh, and, 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 and beveling waste, I'm just going to make this into a little bit of a kind of glue paste. And that glue paste I can then use to stick the feathers onto the front of the stope, soap. And that glue is then going to dry out and become soap itself, same as the soap that we've planed. And it will essentially glue itself to both the soap and the feather. And you will get this beautifully elegant shape. And you've not had to make up another batch of soap to glue things on. This is a really nice technique just for using waste soap to glue things to your uh, already supportified soap. There we go. Now, I haven't chosen the, the greatest tutorial to show you this technique because what's on the uh, board there looks a little bit like pate, but I assure you it will work. So I'm now coming in with our edible rose gold. And basically, now you've got this little bit of water on there and you can still see the sheen, we're going to pick up these little bits of gold leaf. 
and we're just going to get them to stick in nice random ways onto these bars of soap. Simple as that. Um, and the randomness is what makes it beautiful, in my opinion. So you can basically take this, stick it onto the front, and it is fantastic. Now, you may find that whilst the soap is still saponifying, um, you may get a reaction with the lye. However, um, in my experience, I found that the gold leaf is a relatively inert metal and it has no sharp edges or anything like that. And essentially, it's not going to react um, in the instant, in the first instances. So you'll probably sell enough of these that it won't matter um, for use. But even over time, when they tarnish, they may verdigree and stuff like that. It's just a natural process. And for me, it would make the bar even better. But that's never happened in the past. Um, should it happen on these bars? I will update you, um, but again, it's not something I would be overly concerned about. The lovely thing, but the frustrating thing with gold leaf, as you can see, is it's very staticky and it will cling to you, but only realistically clings to an area that has a moisture, uh, somewhere that it can actually stick to. So wherever you've made the soap slightly wet and it's it's kind of dried a little bit but it's still tacky is where this gold leaf is going to stick. Now the nice thing is that even the little tiny bits that kind of roll off you can still use them. So I've got my nice little kind of light brush here. Once all of this gets stuck on, um, I think I'll do a little bit more here. So once it's all nicely kind of stuck on and there's a slightly better view. I'm going to use a brush and then just brush over the surface, which is going to stick anything down that is already kind of like down. And it will brush away anything that hasn't found a place to stick to. But also all these little tiny bits that are just kind of free floating. If there's any sticky areas that I've not kind of quite covered, you can brush those over it and they will stick in. So this is a really nice technique as far as I'm concerned for getting these kind of like flashes of colour into the soap. I love it um, and uh, there'll be a few more of these I'm sure on, on the channel that you'll see. So once you've finished with this one, I'm just going to kind of get all of this nicely on there. We'll clear away this little bit of gold. You can throw that away. I mean, literally you get like 30 or 40 sheets for five pounds. It's no, not worth trying to keep it sometimes. If that for you is not the sort of way you want to go, there is another option for you, and it is mica based. So, the mica that you would use to colour your soaps, there are now these wonderful things. Now, these are called mineral flakes, they're by a company called Resonate, um, and they are based in the UK. So if you feel that using a gold or a silver leaf on your product is not some way you want to go and you're worried about it, you can use these. Now, as you'll see, it's a little bit, the only way I can describe it is like fish food. Um, and that's a horrible description, but it makes sense because they are basically flakes of colour. And again, wet the soap down, add them on, and they work in exactly the same way. Um, and as I was putting them on, I was thinking, do I like them with this? And for me, I love them, and they work beautifully. But on this particular design, there was too much going on, so I eased off on them, and we'll use them in another project. So, 
Last but not least, we are going to stick our feathers onto them. Now, I quite liked the tone on tone, the colour on colour. It's exactly the same colour of feather that I'm using on the uh, front that I've used for the drop swirl. However, you can always pull off a bit, you can make it different colour. There's lots of ways and means of doing these. And once you've made a few of them and you get a little collection going, you can then use them on other projects. So I'm just wetting this uh, glue mixture down again, um, just to get it so that it's actually going to adhere to both sides. And I've brought in my little pot of gold here. Uh, what I want to do with this one is I'm just going to very, very subtly edge each of the feathers with a gold border. Uh, so we'll take a little bit of our glue and we'll add that onto the bar. We're going to take a feather and you should see here as we edge this one you can it's just catching the edge. We haven't got a large brush that's missing it and, and if you want to do this with a brush do it with a brush. I find this a better way of getting a kind of more natural feeling to an edged embed, on bed, however you want to call it. Pop it on top of the glue allow that all to dry and that's not going anywhere. Now this soap for me if you were going to sell it you would then on the very very final bit build a little wall around the soap and over pour with some melt and pour to keep that feather stable. Um, the way I've done it is for display purposes and obviously it's a little bit of a YouTube thing um, but again if you want to make these soaps to sell and then um, have them go home safely you want to have a little bit of melt and pour over the top of that.
if you've enjoyed this video, please give it a like and why not subscribe to the channel? If you do, make sure to click the bell icon and get notified when a new video is uploaded. Thanks a lot, Soapsters, and we'll see you next time.